So in honor of Halloween, we're going to create something similar to this. This is my skull Halloween activity. <laughs> so here's sort of an example. I've got this nice cemetery background and my floating head, which is combined with a skull. And the skull that we're going to use, I got off of Flickr. So it has a Creative Commons license. I've got a link to it on our class website. And uh, there's the skull. Here's my picture, my random selfie I took, and you know, I don't have any makeup on today, my hair's not fixed, so this is a pretty rough picture, but honestly, for Halloween, that's probably the way it should be, right? So when you take your picture for this activity, I would suggest pulling your hair back off of your forehead a bit, like I've done there, um, so that we can combine it with the skull. So you need to get your pictures all situated first off. So I got my skull, I got my picture of me, and I've got my background that I'm going to use. We are going to all drag into this skull image. So this will serve as the uh, background image for all projects. So I'm going to take this picture of me and undock it, grab my move tool and Red Rover, Red Rover, send me right over. And there's a really big picture of me. So that is truly exciting. Um, as always, we're going to control minus or use your navigator to zoom out, control T to transform, and we're going to just scale this down. Uh, now, the goal here is going to be to make it about the same size as the skull. Um, to do that, we're going to need to pull that opacity back. Ooh, isn't this getting scary? Pull that opacity back so that we can see through. Now, we're going to use a clipping mask. So, it's, it's cool and actually preferred if your hair and part of your meaty part of your cheeks and whatnot hangs off of this skull. We need it to because... Otherwise, you're going to end up with like bedroom wall and all this other stuff in your picture. Um, also, to fix that, before we commit this transformation, we've got to sort of get everything lined up properly. And your face is not going to be exactly like the skull. You may need to rotate it around a little bit or, or whatever to make it even. I have one eye that's bigger than the other one, so that's always fun. And then right-click, and while we're in transform mode, let's go to warp. And we're just going to kind of... Uh, warp the image a little bit to make it fit just a little bit better and uh, there we go so get my mouth sort of right over where those teeth would be and of course my teeth are behind my lips so let's go a little bit lower with that maybe pull the pull my chin up a little bit too but okay so something like that is fine I'm going to go ahead and accept that transformation. Now, you would think that I would need you to select this, but honestly, we're not going to need to select it because we're going to clipping mask this face into the skull. So easiest way to do that will be for us to uh, basically remove the background on the skull. And then once we do that, we can clipping mask the face to the skull and only the part that the skull reveals will show. So to do that, the easiest way would be to grab that magic wand tool. This is a solid background, so this should be a quite easy selection. Just one nice little click should do. I've got a standard 32 tolerance here. Then we need to invert that selection. You can go into Select and Mask to do so, or right-click in your selection and select the inverse. Now we are only selected on top of our mask. We are going to put this out to um, its own layer with a layer mask. You could use select a mask to do that or you can just go ahead and click your layer mask button here. It will unlock the background layer and therefore give us that layer mask. So there we go. Uh, pretty simple process there. I'm going to name this skull because you know I'm all about naming those layers and I'm going to name this me. Um, now at this point let's turn the layer of yourself back on. Be sure you're at full opacity and then clipping mask this in so it's now inside there. And at this point if you needed to make changes to it you could. So feel free then to control T and if you need to adjust your face so that it goes out a little bit more on the picture you can or if you need to lower it down. But it's going to be fine in the end, trust me. It will be just fine. All right. Now at this point, we've got to start getting rid of parts of the face that we don't need so we can have this wonderful skull popping through. So that means we're going to add a layer mask to our face layer and then to paint out or get rid of certain areas which will then make the mask or the, the skull show through 
we're going to paint in black. So I'm going to grab a black paintbrush, a nice soft black paintbrush. And if you know me at all, you know I'm about big, huge paintbrushes. And we're just going to paint through. And as we paint, that skull is going to start showing through. Isn't that nice and creepy? There we go. All right. So that's kind of the effect we're going for. If you, uh, you know, want to go farther in, you can. Totally going to be up to you here as to how far across you go. Um, remember, if you need to paint any of it back in, go with white paintbrush. Uh, sometimes when I'm painting back in, I like to go ahead and go a little smaller on my brush just so that it's a little more uh, solid there in those areas. Uh, there we go. Um, not really digging exactly how my nose lines up here, um, but, you know, it will be fine. I could go over it a little farther in there if I wanted to. All right, so that's, I mean, that's the hard part of it, really. At this point, now it's a matter of just adding some refinements to it. For instance, I feel like my eye socket needs to be kind of darker in here. So in this case, I could use a burn tool, but that's a destructive thing, and I'd have to use it on the actual layer. So instead, I'm just going to use a, a layer mask um, on an adjustment layer. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer to my face. I'm going to click here and add a levels adjustment layer. You could even do curves or something like that if you wanted to. Um, actually, I'll do curves this time just to give us a different thing. So we'll click on curves. Um, notice here's the dark area of those. We can pull in to lighten those dark areas. We can pull this way to darken. Now don't pay attention to the rest of the face right now. We're only looking at that eye. I want the eye nice and dark. Now unfortunately it's doing it to the whole image. That's because my layer mask is white. So what I'm actually going to do is while I'm clicked on the layer mask, I'm going to invert the layer mask by pressing Control and I. What that does is it switches the blacks for whites and the whites for black. So now it's solid black. Now on this one I can paint in white to use that adjustment layer. So there we go. It's going to give my creepier eye socket look. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot more fun. All right. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and remove the color from this image. Now we're going to remove the color from the whole image. So it probably is a good idea at this point to start dragging in part of our background. I'm going to grab my marquee selection tool and just select the bottom of this cemetery image and drag that part over. So I'm going to grab that and pull it on over. If it gets stuck in the layer mask, just understand you may have to release the clipping mask and then um, fix that. So I've got this in here. It's fine. I'm going to go ahead and pull it to the bottom of everything, Control T, and go ahead and scale that up. Generally, we wouldn't want to scale stuff up, but for this spooky image, it's going to be fine. Um, so there we go. I'm going to hit Enter. And we'll get that in there. We're going to end up darkening this again anyway, so it's going to be okay. All right, next up, let's do an overall black and white adjustment. So um, now, because this was this curves clipping mask, or this curves adjustment layer mask is to my eye, I'm going to go ahead and clip it into the eye too, just so I am not confused. And I'm going to name this black the eye, so I know what that's for. But the next adjustment layer is just going to go above everything. So black and white, that's going to do that. You can make some adjustments to it. Now, because I'm a very much a white girl, as you would say, I have a lot of pink to my skin. So reds is going to really give me um, a lot of changes in the black and white. I'm loving this. So I'm going to go deep on my reds and give me some yucky, now you can see my pores and freckles thing going on here. Same thing with yellow. There's going to be a lot of yellow if you're a Caucasian person. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take care of that as well. Now, at this point, if you are noticing there's any issues with, like, the way your face is lined up or whatever, it's still not too late to move it around. So um, I could go ahead and connect. I need to connect the, the, the me layer with the black, the eye layer. I'm going to link this layer. So I'm going to control and click to select both of those together, right click and link. That way, when I move one, it moves the other. So at this point, I could, like, scoot down, you know, this face if I needed to match up the teeth better or the nose or something like that. So just know that you can still like move your stuff around if you wanted to. All right, so I've got my overall black and white on there. I think that looks pretty good, but it's still pretty bright. So I'm also gonna do an overall levels adjustment. Again, it's gonna go at the top of everything. We're gonna pull the black slider in. Don't pull the white slider in or things are gonna get lighter, which is not really what we're after here. So the black will make things blacker. Of course, the background has a lot of black, so it's getting a lot darker. We really need to, 
to deepen the gray tone area. So there we go. There's that. So that's overall going to be a whole lot better. It is still a little bit light. Um, you can pull from this white slider to light or to darken the white areas as well. Um, so I'm just going to adjust these output levels a little bit on here. But for the most part, you know, that's that's kind of it. Now, at this point, if there are certain things that you don't want to see anymore, like on the skull, if I didn't want to see this head up here, I could adjust the skull's mask. You know, it still is just a layer mask. So I could paint on the layer mask in black to hide. Um, now, granted, <clears throat> if I use a soft brush, this is going to fade into the background. So this may not be the best idea in the world but just to show you like you could sort of paint this out this is kind of almost a ghosty effect but you know like if you wanted to you could sort of paint out that top edge or um, you know paint out the bottom if you didn't want the whole bottom part to show you know we're, we're going with a Halloween vibe so we could go and just kind of make this whole thing a little bit spookier if we wanted to um, so yeah but it's kind of your, this your baby. You can do what you want to with it. Um, but I pretty much like it. So here was my initial other example. Now this was actually with a lower quality picture. And I pulled those grays way down with that one. Um, this one I left things up a bit. But it's all something we can change. We can still pull this down. We can still make it darker. If we wanted to, to darken the face some more without it affecting that background, we could do a levels adjustment on just the face. So like I could come in here. Um, and do a levels adjustment here or even an exposure like it's kind of overexposed so I'm going to go ahead and put an exposure in. it's in the clipping mask so it's only going to do it to the face it's pointing down um, but I can pull the exposure down so there we go we get a nice uh, grayer look there there is an offset so if you go the other direction it's going to kind of decrease that quality there but um, and a gamma correction too I mean we're getting a little bit too creepy there now uh, but Anyway, so that's, I mean, that's the essential gist of what we're going after. So if you want to kind of go with the ghosty, spooky one there, you could. Um, again, this other picture, I wasn't really in the light as much. So the picture was darker and grainier. Um, but the picture quality really isn't going to matter on this. You can do all kinds of really um, cool spooky effects. So again, your main goal here is going to be to learn to use your adjustment layers wisely and to be sure to clipping mask things into the layers that they affect. Uh, so... Anyway, have fun with making yourself a skeleton.